Today I'm talking about thin layer chromatography. Now, much as I love all things chemistry, TLC is dull. It's dull in theory and it's dull in practice. But explaining the technique is a really popular long answer exam style question, which to be honest is simply baffling. However, the good news is that this is exactly the type of question that should make you jump for joy. Uh, not literally, obviously, because that would be deemed inappropriate behaviour in an exam hall, but you can put together a perfect answer to pick up all the marks, learn it and regurgitate as necessary. So here goes. We start with a plastic plate coated in silica or alumina. This is our stationary phase and the coating gives a very high surface area for adsorption. Step one is to draw a pencil line about a centimetre from the bottom of the plate. Now, to get full marks, mark schemes talk about fine detail in a student's answer. This is an example of fine detail. The line has to be drawn in pencil. If it was drawn in ink, it would simply dissolve in the solvent and wash into the beaker or rise up the plate and your experiment would be null and void. Step two is to take our mixture to be separated and spot it onto the middle of the pencil line. We build up a small but concentrated spot. Step three, pour about half a centimetre of solvent, and this is our mobile phase, into a beaker and carefully place the plate in the beaker, taking care that the solvent doesn't splash the spot and it's not above the pencil line. We want our solvent to rise up the plate by capillary action and take the substances in our mixture with it hence separating them out. Step four is to place a lid on the beaker to ensure that the solvent doesn't simply evaporate and to create a saturated atmosphere. This is another example of fine detail. We're explaining why the lid is important. Now, often a carefully labelled and drawn diagram will suffice for a method, but check past papers and mark schemes and see what your particular exam board will accept. The solvent rises up the plate by capillary action, with each substance in the mixture moving at a rate determined by its affinity for the solvent versus the stationary phase, and it appears on the plate as a spot. The plate must be removed from the solvent before the solvent front reaches the top of the plate, and this is marked with a pencil so that we can calculate RF values later on. Then we dry the plate before analysing. That is a key step that students often forget to mention. Now, spots need not be coloured substances. We can look at the plate under UV light to determine their position or spray with a dye. Ninhydrin is commonly used when identifying amino acids and then they appear as purple spots. Alternatively, we can place our plate into a clean beaker, add a few iodine crystals, put a lid on or some cling film, and the iodine will vaporise, staining the spots more darkly than the rest of the plate. This is where you can tailor your answer to the actual exam question. We can use TLC to qualitatively analyse a mixture, for example, to find out whether we've got a particular amino acid present in a mixture. In this case, we'd also spot a sample of the pure amino acid in question onto the pencil starting line to see whether it rises to the same point as one of the substances in the mixture. Calculating the retention factor or RF value for a spot is a more accurate way of analysing the TLC plates, since RF values are characteristic of a particular substance, assuming that the type of solvent used and the temperature are standardised. So all we need to do is divide the distance moved by the spot in question by the distance moved by the solvent front. Now, because the RF value is a ratio, it doesn't matter how you measure it. You can measure it in newts for all anyone cares, but to be honest, working with millimetres and a ruler is more conventional. Now, thin layer chromatography does have a couple of disadvantages, in addition to just being really dull. We can only work with very small quantities of a mixture, and although it's not impossible to extract a spot or substance from the plate at the end of the experiment, it's really not straightforward. As always, there's a link in the blurb to the Crunch Chemistry website where you can find the notes to go with this video. And if this has been useful, then please like, share, subscribe. It makes a huge difference to a small channel like us. I look forward to seeing you next time.